You've been trying so hard to get a band 7 in writing, so you can finally study or immigrate to the UK, Canada, Australia or New Zealand. But no matter how hard you try, you're stuck at band 6.5. However, don't despair, Harry's here from IL Stott and I'm here to help you break through the 6.5 writing barrier. Firstly, if you haven't already done so, I'd recommend that you watch my four-part series of the 20 commonly made mistakes made in the IELTS essays. And now in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of this Outway essay. The reason why I feel I needed to make this series is because many candidates believe that the structure and requirements of an IELTS essay is relatively straightforward. Yes, all essays have four or five paragraphs, an introduction, two or three body paragraphs and then a conclusion. However, there are some small but very important differences between them depending on the type of essay. So in part 5, I'm going to focus on the Outway essay and here's the question that I'll be working on. In some countries, there has been an increase in the number of parents who educate their children themselves at home instead of sending them to school. Do the advantages of home education outweigh the disadvantages? Or they might ask the question in another way, such as, do you think there are more advantages of home education than disadvantages? Now for the outweigh essay, the key words you should be looking out for are outweigh and more. These two keywords will help you to differentiate between the Outway essay and the Ideas or Opinion Discussion essay, which I've already covered in parts 2 and 3 of my 8-part series of the different essay types. I also need to mention that the majority of IELTS students make two major mistakes when they write the Outway essay because they tackle it as if it were an opinion discussion or discuss the advantages and disadvantages type of essay. The first mistake is that students only write four paragraphs, and the second mistake is that they'll write two advantages and two disadvantages in the two body paragraphs. So please don't make these two major mistakes in an outweigh essay. So firstly, let's look at the structure. Unlike the previous essays I've discussed so far, this essay will have five paragraphs, not four. The introduction, the three body paragraphs, and then the conclusion. A good way to divide the word count is to write about 25 words in the introduction, 70 words in the second paragraph, 70 words in the third paragraph, 70 words in the fourth paragraph, and 25 words in the conclusion. Please remember though, never write below 250 words and never exceed 300. Another difference is that the Outway essay will only have one point per body paragraph, not two. The typical advantages and disadvantages essay has a ratio of 2 to 2, which means two advantages and two disadvantages. However, in the Outway essay, the ratio will be 1 to 2, which means one advantage to two disadvantages, or vice versa. One disadvantage to two advantages. In this essay, I'm going to argue that the disadvantages outweigh the advantages, so here are the points that I'll be using. For the advantage, I'll use one of the benefits of homeschooling is its flexibility, which I'll write in the first body paragraph. And for the two disadvantages, I'll use children lack the opportunity to socially interact and many parents are ill-equipped to teach a more advanced curriculum, which I'll write in the second and third body paragraphs respectively. But it's very important to remember to write about the side that you personally oppose in the first body paragraph and the two sides that you support in body paragraphs 3 and 4. Okay, so let's start with the introduction. Like all essays, it's important to paraphrase the essay statement and then after doing this, you'll need to write your opinion. And here's an example of the introduction. Homeschooling has become more commonplace in many countries. In my opinion, although it offers more flexibility, however, there is a lack of social interaction for the child and many parents are ill-equipped to teach a more advanced curriculum. Here you'll have noticed that I include all three points that I brainstormed earlier. Now that the introduction is done, let's start with the first body paragraph. In this paragraph, you'll always need to write about the one point that you personally don't support. 
And once again, it's important to follow the paragraph structure of a topic sentence. Plus the P, E and E, which stands for point, explain an example. But because the Outway essay only has one point per paragraph, I'd recommend that you also add the T, which stands for thus and therefore, which act as a concluding sentence. And here's the example of the first body paragraph. One of the main benefits of homeschooling is its flexibility. If a school child is struggling with a challenging subject or a specific topic, for example, the parent can focus on this area of weakness until the child has completely mastered it. In mainstream schools, however, this flexibility is not available as the teacher is forced to plow through the curriculum despite any straggling students. Likewise, if a child masters a particular concept, there's no need for extra classes devoted to the subject and the parent can instead move on to the next topic. Thus, homeschooling can go as slow or as fast as is required and can be custom designed for a child's specific needs. To make your writing slightly more sophisticated, you can embed the linking words, for example, and however within the sentences like I've done here, instead of starting them at the beginning of the sentence. Now let's move on to the second body paragraph which focuses on the first disadvantage of homeschooling and once again I'm following the paragraph structure of a topic sentence plus the P, E, E and T. The lack of social interaction, however, is a drawback that needs to be addressed. When a child is enrolled at a school, they are in constant contact with their peers and their teachers. This opportunity allows them to not only learn about different types of personalities, cultures, beliefs and opinions, but it is also during these interactions that they begin to develop social skills, norms and cues, which they would not otherwise be able to learn in the comfort of their homes. If a child is not socialized at an early stage, for instance, they may find it difficult to adjust to society as an adult. Therefore, homeschooling can severely inhibit a child's overall social development. Now, let's start with a third body paragraph which focuses on the second disadvantage, following the paragraph structure of a topic sentence plus the P, E and E. But because I've already used both thus and therefore, I'll use H instead, which stands for hence. When a parent is homeschooling, they must teach a broad range of subjects to ensure their child acquires a well-rounded education. The danger of this, however, is that there is a real possibility that the parent may not be competent in teaching more advanced subjects. This may not pose such a problem if their child is in their formative education because the curriculum is based on basic concepts. There is a strong possibility, however, that it can be a serious issue once a child enters secondary school where advanced mathematical concepts, for instance, such as algebra, trigonometry, and calculus are taught. Hence, their child is at risk once they enter secondary school if a parent does not thoroughly know advanced subjects and topics. Now, let's move on to the conclusion. Remember, don't add anything new in the conclusion and basically it's a paraphrase of the introduction. Once again, don't forget to include the one advantage and the two disadvantages that supports your opinion. And here's an example of the conclusion. In conclusion, homeschooling has become more widely embraced by parents across the globe. Although a child can learn at their own pace, I believe that the lack of socializing opportunities and some parents not being competent in teaching advanced subjects are worrying. Well, that's all for now and thank you for watching. Please don't forget to watch part 6 of my 8-part series where I'll be covering the 5th type of essay called the positive and negative essay in more detail. If you like what I do, please like, subscribe and share my channel and press the bell icon for notifications of new videos. Cheerio!